Okay, I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. We have a quorum and uh, we are going to look at the October 18th minutes. Does anybody have any additions, omissions or corrections? <coughs> Everybody's had a chance to read them. These were Sheila notes? Yes. Good job. Again, we have two fantastic note takers. Oh, we're very sorry lucky. about the multiple emails. I needed some additional information from Cindy and got so excited I was done. I went and sent them. <laughs> okay. All right. Does anybody have any problems with the Then I'll accept a motion to, ex to accept. That's kind of redundant. Motion right to here. accept. Is there a second? I will second. And we'll do a roll call vote. Megan votes. Accept. Jim. Accept. Cynthia. I wasn't there, but can I accept the minutes as written? I was not oh, there last month. That's an interesting question. Um, oh. Oh. I would think so, because we're discussing yeah. whether or not they were recorded. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's a good Are they yeah. properly recorded? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I can vote, then, then I accept them. <laughs> okay, and um, Sheila? I accept them. Okay, and I also vote to accept. Bob is joining us at this moment, Great. and we'll tell him that we accepted them. Hi, Bob. We just accepted the minutes from uh, October 18th. Excellent. Sorry I'm late. No problem. Okay. See you. Hi, Bob. Jim, it's all yours. Did anybody, everybody get my spreadsheet? Yes. yes. Uh, okay. Um, I don't see anything unusual about the month of October. I was pleasant, surprised that the electricity bill was so low, but it wow. might have been just between seasons. It wasn't heating and it wasn't cooling. It was probably just kind of idling along. So it's only $148, and that's, that's a good number. So we'll expect to see that uh, begin to go up next month uh, through early spring. Um, okay. The, there's, the other thing, and I mentioned to you all last week, the Comcast uh, numbers, um, DARA is got it summed at $335. It is indeed $435. It's just a summing error on her part. It's nothing to be concerned about. Um, okay. I may point that out to her. She just probably kicked on the sum sign and just missed something. So, um, okay. But other than that, um, it, it's all good. Our expenses were very low for October, two thousand three hundred twenty-three dollars and eighty-one cents. So, any questions? You normally, get fuel. Is that just as an as-needed basis? I'm sorry. Fuel. When do we usually get fuel? We're on As automatic needed. delivery, so we okay. should probably be getting something soon. Okay. We've got, I think, three quarters of a tank right now, so it's, but yeah, it's pretty much on, on easy. It's an automatic. Yeah. No, I was just curious when, yeah. when that will be eaten up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to the special revenue accounts. Um, I was a little disappointed uh, that Dara... Uh, failed to accumulate the revenues and expenses for this fiscal year. Um, she, she really should have. She just dumped it all into the beginning balance. Um, oh. Again, I don't think it's anything we need to be too concerned about, but it's nice to be able to look at where we are in the year and what accounts we've drawn monies from. And, and I can't give you that because she didn't give it to me. Um, it, we haven't spent a lot of our trust funds money this year, very, very little. So again, I, there's no red flag here. I'm not too concerned about it. I wish that hadn't happened. Um, Jimmy? Yeah. Um, I have a question. Could we, even though it's, well, it's not really part of these trust funds, how's the Duda fund doing? I don't know. Bob's the only one that has access to it. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, okay. I can check. I, I can check on that um, for okay. you. Maybe next month we could talk about that, Bob. Okay. I have never, um, you know, contacted them. So I have to go back to the stuff that was given to me and uh, figure out how it is. <laughs> I yeah. yeah. Okay. 
I, I can tell you this, Sheila, that I, I know when we took the 7,500 for the feasibility study, we got all that back in interest. Very well, shortly. you know, that's what I'm wondering. It's got to have grown a little bit. And oh, always sure in the has. back of my mind is the, is the yeah. thought that from small to a little bit larger, um, yeah. they have provided some nice area grants. So yeah. I just want to see how they perform that uh, after this third quarter. Okay. Hey, uh, Jim, w one other question. It was uh, last month that we saw that 600 some odd dollars was put in from the yeah. um, book sale and yeah. that should have showed up under general do donations, but that's something Dara let slip, right? No, she just included it in the beginning balance. Oh, okay. So we, just, we can't, <laughs> that's one of the reasons I'd like to see that, but I can't any longer. So she just put it in the beginning balance. All right. Okay. Any other questions on the financial report? Okay, Cindy, it's your, it's your turn. I'm here, but for some reason, the camera is not wanting to cooperate with me. Should I leave and then try coming back in to see if that makes a difference? Or are you guys okay with not seeing me? Okay. Whatever, whatever you'd like, Cindy. Um, if, it, right. if you want to continue, um, why don't you why don't you do your report and then you can duck out leave and then, and then come back? Yeah. Okay. So did everyone get a copy of my director's report? I mean, I sent it out last week. Yep. Yes. Okay. And then I for, forgot I was wait, I attended the Board of Health meeting on Tuesday night um through Zoom and they did approve um in person, it's okay to have in person events at the library as long as we follow the recommendations that I sent out today. Um, because programming is one of the things that is on the agenda to discuss under new business, so I can leave it till then. Okay. Um, just do me, then, a favor. do me a favor on that, um, is just check your spelling of waiting. Oh, yes, I noticed that too. Okay. I've had that problem since I started six years ago. Uh, that happens. I think it has to do with the location of the letters as you type. Yeah, you just get going. And you, okay, so I can either go into what I have, which is under new, some of the stuff under new pro, under new business, or I can wait till we get to new business and discuss it. Um. Well, considering that it's a posted agenda, I think we have to stick by the agenda. Okay, so if it's new, we got to wait until new business in case there's a member of the public that wants to weigh in. All right, so that's pretty much all. Does anyone have any questions for me about anything? Um, are the circulation numbers getting somewhat back to normal or is that still lower than say like 27 or 2018? Uh, no, they're they're actually are up here. Yes, they can't see us right now. Yeah. No, they actually are getting better because if you notice, um, for this past October, we had six hundred and ninety-one items circulate through the library, as opposed to last year when we only had three hundred and seventy-eight. Because at that time we were only open during curbside pickup. Yeah. Um, so books, items circulate more when patients are actually able to come in and pick them out for themselves. Okay. How do, do you, we, go ahead. Go how ahead. do we compare to two years ago? So not yeah. during the pandemic or post pandemic. So like 2019, 2018, like what are the, what were those numbers for October? I, I guess what would be helpful to understand where we are in the recovery process would be not just to compare ourselves to the previous year because the previous year and a half were challenging and different, but to compare and ourselves to leave. both last year Same. and two or three years ago, that would, I think, be helpful information, data. Yeah, I, I'd like to see that analyzed. I can email that information out to you tomorrow. That is something that I have access to as the administrator for Evergreen. Um, so I can, when I get into the library tomorrow, I can go into my admin account and get those numbers and email them to you. 
Great. Just um, try for 2018 and 2019. Okay, so I wrote that down. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, All right. Cindy. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to leave. Camera roll. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, now we're going to move on to uh, old business and Jim update on ADA compliance. I'm well, sure tomorrow, tomorrow's a big day for us. The bids are going to be opened at 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon at the town offices. I have no clue of what's come in, and I certainly don't know what's in the sealed bids, but we'll know tomorrow at 2 where we stand on this thing, this project. So keep okay. your fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is there is there anything else? Uh, I know Bob, you met with with John Hannum, and there was uh, controversy swirling around that. Ooh. Do we have any resolution on that issue? Perhaps you want to explain to Megan and. Well, yeah, I I don't know if I'd use the word controversy, but there was some there were some issues. And first of all, just I'd like to thank everybody for moving the meeting forward one week. Um, that helps me out a lot. I'm still at home next week is, I don't know what next week is going to bring. So thanks to everybody for bringing it forward a, a week. Um, as far as meeting with John Hannum, I met with him at the library. He pointed out that there's on the top of the elevator shaft by mass code, there's a fire uh, smoke detector as part of the fire detection or the, the fire whatever system um his understanding was that smoke detector would be hooked up to some type of monitoring we weren't completely aware of that that was part of what i was trying to feel him out about um he said you're gonna have to do that and he was not willing to budge when I talked with Jim about this, and my understanding is between the architect and their stamp and the fire chief, if you keep the fire I'm chief happy and the architect signs off on it, you're pretty much good to go. But if the fire chief isn't happy, um, you don't have a lot of room to move. So he wants to see monitoring. When I asked him if there was anything else he'd like to see, he pointed out nine other smoke detectors that he'd like to see in the building that were hooked up to that monitoring system. So he talked about smoke detectors in, um, on the first floor in each of the three rooms and in the basement in all the different closets, one in the boiler room. Um, or storage areas on either end, one in the main room, and I'm sorry, I'm not getting the, the room names correct, but then also one in the boiler room and then one at the um, base of the stairs and one at the top of the stairs. His comment to me was he would concede to those not being wired. He'd concede to those being Bluetooth, mon Bluetooth talking to each other. One that's wired and hooked up to the monitoring system. He mentioned to me they were about $55 a piece. He's allowed them in other buildings. They've been very, they've worked just fine. Um, I looked real quick, saw that they were about $55 a piece. So it's going to add some cost. Jim and I have had conversations around since this is a town asset, is there a town account with a monitoring system that we can get hooked into, to me, it feels more like the town ought to cover annual monitoring costs rather than the library covering those. And so there is an annual cost associated, even if we do the $55, there is then an there's annual an, cost. There's an annual cost to have it monitored. For example, um, I don't know what the commercial numbers are, but for my house, it's uh, Fifty-four dollars every quarter. Hmm. So two hundred and twelve dollars a year. But then, if a smoke detector goes off when my son's friends are over and they're cooking dinner, 
<laughs> All of a sudden, John Hannum gets the call and everybody scrambles and they're up here. Hmm. And it teaches my son a, a lesson about how to try to cook. But um, personally, I was kind of shocked to find out there's no monitoring of that building. That, are, yeah. Are all other town buildings, I'm thinking fire station, police station, town offices. The fire are, station, the fire station is monitored. The police station's not. The elementary school is monitored. The um, town building on Sandy Lane is monitored and the old town hall is monitored. We, we had this discussion several years ago and it predates three of our newest trustees and none of the buildings were monitored at the time. I don't know if you recall that Sheila and Bob. Yes, and so we water. said, well, if they're not monitored, we're not gonna be monitored. And that yeah. was left as it was. And I was unaware that since that discussion, that the other buildings came online. But I think it's a good idea. It's the cost is negligible. And I think we, we can work to pass the cost onto the town. I, I, yeah, that's my feeling is as a, as a town building, as a yeah, town a asset, What's this is something the town ought to shoulder. This, I can't imagine you don't this. Have to hang out the, here. You can go watch your shows this on back to the school, the elementary school and comes out of one of their budget items. I only assume this is gonna come out of, you know, the, the overall town. I asked John who pays for it at the fire department. And he said, well, everything we get comes from the town. So it doesn't really matter. Hmm. Um, I had a couple other conversations. I talked with the electrical inspector. I talked with the building inspector. Their comment was if the architect's happy and John Hannum's happy, we're happy. Uh, everybody's going to have to pull permits. We'll review everything they do at that point. Obviously, it's got to be up to code. Um, I don't see John budging, and I have to agree with him. When I asked him, when I sort of pushed and said, well, does that really have to be monitored? And he said, Bob, what if you're in that elevator and it fills up with smoke? If it's not monitored, you're stuck, potentially. Okay, so how do we proceed, Jim? Well, this will be in the plan. She's she's created an addendum okay. Okay. already, and she she's told the uh, prospective bidders to hold back three thousand dollars for a system like this, which I think is a lot, but nevertheless, that's what she did. So it's going to be added to the project. Okay, and then we'll, we will work out who's going to pay for it after it's in. Okay. Is there anything else to update us on? Just tomorrow would be the big day. And that's the next item of business was uh, project bids. And we will know more about that tomorrow. Yep. Are you going Close to the, the day. Jim, are you going to the open? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. For sure. Okay. It's at two o'clock. Um, no, could, no. you, could you maybe send uh, an email out just indicating how many bids there were and if, uh, yeah. If they were favorable or not, yeah, I will. I will certainly do that. Can okay. we know who they are, or is that not? Well, it's public. This it the uh, opening is a public. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's public information at this point. So yeah. yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay, would appreciate Thanks, it, Jimmy. Okay, uh, how about holiday tree uplighting? Uh, yeah, uplighting. Yeah, holiday tree lighting update. I knew there was an up in there somewhere. Just had it in the wrong place. Cindy, can you unmute? Yeah, sorry. I guess the camera's deciding not to work tonight. So it is okay with the Board of Health that the friends have the holiday tree lighting. However, they have asked us to try to not to have any part of it inside yeah. and to not serve hot chocolate or cookies this year. Okay. And I don't know how, because I could only stay for a certain bit of the meeting. So I don't know what the plan is for music. Maybe Cynthia will have that information during the friends update. It's really they, they're still looking for musicians. Yeah, Ellen Strasky and Katie Ross are 
on looking for musicians. And they were thinking of maybe having uh, wrapped candy canes, um, something like that, which is not open or, or whatever as a little treat thing. Um, and that's all I know about that. And they were looking at the, the um, was it the Sunday of Thanksgiving week, Cindy? No, they wanted to do it that too which was the traditionally the first Saturday of December. And I believe that they want to keep it the first. No, I thought that the Rosses were going okay out of I... town. Therefore Tw they were going to move it to. They said 12, four at the meeting. Uh, yeah. 12, four. Okay. All right. With the understanding the Rosses would not be able to attend because they have a previous mm -hmm. engagement. Well, that was not the conversation I just had with my wife an hour ago. Um, so I don't know. I don't know the answer to the question. I do think that she said that they were hoping to move it to the November date. Let me just look at my calendar. That would be. What was it the Sunday after Thanksgiving? Yeah, the 28th. Sunday, Sunday the 28th, I thought. Let me just uh, excuse myself for a second from the meeting and I'll go um, check that out. I, if that, I just got it. a note from my wife and it says the Saturday or Sunday after Turkey Day. Okay, so That's the 27th or 8th. Yeah. Okay. Got right here. They're looking at, all right, they're looking at November 27th or 28th. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll be in touch with Mary Ellen then tomorrow to confirm everything up and start to get it promoted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, ch I'll check with Keith. We got to get Mark in there to um, fire up that utility outlet. So, hey, Jimmy. I'll, I'll, I'll follow that up. Can we wrap the lights this way? Yeah. Wrap them around the tree. Yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Is, there, is, um, is there any other old business? I think in old business, we often had the report on the friends meeting, which I didn't put on there this month. So do you wanna, does anybody wanna to speak to that? Was there a reason you left it off? Uh, old age. <laughs> I, I just have one I comment. I will, I will adjust the timers for daylight, uh, Eastern oh. Standard Time. Um, Again, thank you. Tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, has um, Speaking of that, has there been any complaints about the lights or anything anymore? Not lately. I, I have not received a complaint. Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. No, well, once we light the Christmas tree up, we'll probably get some comments. <laughs> <laughs> is there going to be, is, is this, there going to be an announcement like out on the street or some way for me to find out when the tree lighting is going to be once it all gets yeah. figured out? Seems like a good idea. Yeah. I just heard a yes over my shoulder. So. Okay. And, <laughs> then you'll be able yep. Yes. And as soon as I know the date, we can change the sandwich board sign and put it outside so everyone will know the date as they drive by. Perfect. Okay. Also put it up on the Facebook and um, Instagram account. Yes. Good. Okay. And the town web and our web page. All right. Good. Excellent. Okay. So what did, what was discussed at the meeting, if the friends meeting was um, they were thanked, Cindy thanked them for their buying the park and museum passes. And there's now a new brochure, which I don't know if any of you have seen yes. that um, promotes that. It looks good. It looks really good. That I believe Rebecca um, put together. But anyway, so that's now available for patrons. It explains the rules and what's available, how long you can use it for, et cetera, what museums and park places are covered. So that's, um, you know, Cindy was very grateful to the friends for their support of that. And we're also grateful to Rebecca for her work. Uh, the tree lighting was discussed and, and, and clearly discussions have kept happening about that. Um, there was also a lot of talk about one of the performers who ended up not uh, performing. And 
so there that led to discussion of the fact that there's no we don't have contracts or agreements with any of our performers at this point in time and um this particular person is expecting to be paid by both the cultural council and the friends despite not performing so um there was a lot of talk about that there they're definitely planning for next year for 2022 of different events that are going to be coming up and starting to budget for that. And there was the discussion of whether or not to put a tab back on the website right now. There is no tab for the friends of the Waitley library on the Waitley library website page. So that is something that they would need to discuss with Cindy I don't know that it really involves us at all. I sent them after their meeting examples of other libraries in the area who have tabs for their friends on their library pages so they could see different examples of what is what is do being done. Most of them do ask for donations on those pages. Some people just say, send us a check. Other people have PayPal donations, ways to just do a digital payment right there and then the friends thought that that would be um, something that they're not ready to handle at this point in terms of the bookkeeping that would be required by that. So they're going to pass on that um, option, but they would certainly, I think, be open to other things. So they're they're still going to discuss what they would want up there, but it's it seemed like a good idea to consider putting a tab to let people know that we have a friends group and different ways that people can involve themselves with the friends, either be, by becoming a friend with an annual contribution yeah. and or opportunities to volunteer, whether it's at an event or, you know, just helping in the myriad of ways that they need help to accomplish the events that they do. So um, it seemed like it's an opportunity for everybody to benefit if we add that tab back on or if we add a tab for the friends. When did that come off or did we, I, I, I have I some information about this. I did some investigating of this today and there was a Friends of the Wheatley Library tab on our website. However, somewhere along the way, it got connected to the Wheatley his um, historical society. So if you clicked on Friends of Waitley Public Library, it would pop you to like the homepage of the Waitley Historical Society. So at this point, in order for there to be a Friends tab, Mary Ellen and I would have to start from scratch to create just a simple document that I can then upload onto the website. Okay. I think that that is um, the bailiwick of the friends and not the trustees. So I would like to um, ask if there's any other old business. I just, um, I make that comment because uh, it, it relates to uh, something I want to discuss in new business, the second item. Is there any other old business? All right, then we're going to move to discussion of programming at library and Cindy, you're back on. Okay, so... Um, part of the reason that I asked that this be put on the agenda under new business is that I've gotten some pushback from the Cultural Council due to um, their concern about the lack of no attendance or very low attendance at Cultural Council funded events. For example, the performer, she could have had an audience of three people and still performed, but she chose not to and she submitted payment to the Cultural Council. Um, when Sarah Clay came, apparently they were upset that four members of the audience were her family members. Um, but so it was suggested that I reach out to the trustees to see if there's any way they could assist me with programming. I know programming is not my strength. I probably would be much better at it now had the pandemic not hit. But library programming, no matter who the director is, no matter the library, it's always hit and miss. You think you're gonna have, you know, you put your heart and effort into your program and you think it's gonna be totally awesome and five people show up. And then you put in little to no effort and a hundred people show up. 
Um, I have reached out to my fellow library and the woods librarians for guidance and suggestions, and they've given me some useful information to consider. Um, so I guess, of course, at this point, we're not even doing in-person programming. So I don't even know if this is a discussion we should be having now or wait until after the first of the year and we see how things go after the first of the year. Um, well, you know, um, we're entering into the holiday season and um, right. who, who knows what's going to happen in terms of um, uh, the virus. Uh, after the holidays, so maybe it's not a bad idea to to um, to look at this more specifically in January, Cindy. I okay. want to I want to tell everybody that Cindy's been really upfront. She contacted me about this as soon as as the call came to her from um, the C cultural council, and um, has been very straightforward about um, trying to work harder on programming and that it was not one of her strengths. And I really appreciate that honesty, Cindy, a lot. And um, I am certain that we can figure out a way um, to assist you in 2022, as soon as we know that there is something to assist you for, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Me too. That's why I wanted to have that, the, this conversation with everyone, because I know it's not a strength of mine, but I really am working with resources I have and reaching out to people who have been doing this for 20 years and being a part of the libraries in the woods is really helping me because it's giving okay. me the opportunity to maybe co-host events or even just get ideas from other libraries of different types of programs to offer. So yes, definitely would love to talk about it more. Okay. So is it, is it okay to put it until January? Do you want to revisit it in December? I uh, think waiting till January is totally fine. And by then it will give me an opportunity because I did reach out to, and Sunderland and Greenfield sent me copies of performer agreements that they have. And I didn't ooh. get them in time to be able to sort of create one for us. So that will give me time to work on one for us to get it to everyone so that it could be approved. Well, that's great work, Cindy. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Can I ask, is there anything like, is there anything in the cultural council's side of things? Like, do, do they promote it? Do like, what are their expectations? Like, do, are like, do they just so there low attendance? I'm not sure how much of it was even me and how much of it was just this particular individual and the performer not really getting along and that I just happened to be caught in it because it was a library event. But the Cultural Council's expectation is if it's a Cultural Council funded event that they get credit for it being a Cultural Council event, which we do in all of our marketing, we put the little Massachusetts Cultural Council logo and the blurb that it's a Wheatley Cultural Council event sponsored by, and they receive their funds from the Massachusetts Cultural Council. So, so that's as far as I, and it goes uh -huh. on our website, it goes on Facebook, Instagram, posters at town offices. We're not allowed to post at town uh, post office anymore. So it goes on the outside sign kiosk. It goes in the kiosk that Work of the Woods fixed for us. I mean, the performers put it on their websites. It's just, I mean, I can under, you know, one minute we could have a concert inside. The next minute we have to have it outside. People can come, but you have to be distanced. So then maybe less people come because you have to be distanced. Well, I have an idea. We should, wherever in the world the hallmark channel gets its christmas movies where there's snow on the ground but the trees still have leaves and no one's breath ever shows that's we got to do that so that we can have out i'm sorry i'm just <laughs> the next time that there's a next time something's filming in downtown sharburn falls i'll try and hijack the crew okay cindy what? um so what we'll do is we'll, we'll um, if you will remind me with an email in December, um, when I create the January agenda, I will um, put that back on as old business and we will return to that. And maybe in that month um, interim, the rest of us can think about 
uh, how we can help in terms of, of um, help Cindy with programming. I mean, I don't know what's out there, you know, but um, maybe others, other folks do. And it's good, Cindy, that you're looking at other libraries. Appreciate that. Thank you. And I will do that, Bob. Okay, thanks. Um, is there anything else about that um, that anyone wants to discuss? Okay. What's the feeling from, are the friends going to pay her or no? It seems to me that. I don't know. I think it was decided that if she really wants to get paid, then she owes us a performance. That is pretty because rational. I, I had a very hard time with the fact that she invoiced the friends for not, basically she wants to get paid for not performing. Well, especially since there's no contract, correct, Cindy? Yeah. Right, there there's no, no contract. Okay, I don't so, know. It's up to It's up to the friends, whatever they decide. It is, um, it's just, it's bad PR, I mean. It really is for her. The well, friends, unless she runs friends her mouth about a, the library not paying her. Friends are a separate entity. They have their own 501c. It's their yep. decision, not ours. Yep. 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 Okay. I just don't want blowback on the library. That was my point yeah. there. Yeah. Sorry. Good point. Good point. Good point. Okay. Anything else on that? Okay. The last uh, new business item was discussion of trustees' roles at friends meeting. I brought this up last month um, because I think it's time for the friends and Cindy uh, to work on their own um, for a while. Uh, I just think that uh, Cindy and I talked at length about this and I, Cindy, don't let me put words in your mouth, but, it, but paraphrasing what you've told me is that you, you feel like you'd like to try to develop the relationship um, more on your own um, and if necessary, no, I'm sorry, Cindy, what? Oh, I'm all set. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Bob. Well, do you, why don't you just, why don't you just talk about it? Um, right. And then, that way I don't have to paraphrase you. <laughs> so I really appreciate the effort that Sheila, Cynthia and Megan have put in to helping me work with the friends. It's been really helpful and useful, but at the same time, I feel like I should start to work with them on my own and develop my own relationship with them. I know it's not gonna be perfect. And I know on both sides, we're gonna make mistakes, but I felt this last meeting, even though I could only be there for maybe the first 15 minutes, I thought we had a very positive conversation around the performer and whether or not she should get paid and I answered you know the questions that came about that and then the discussion of well why don't we have performance agreements which you know something I never thought about before so I would just like to try I respect that and Comments. then yep. if it blows up in my face again then I guess I'll come uh, back to the meeting and say I was wrong but Cindy, it's also a different, a wholly different personnel. Um, right. So. And we have four people who seem really committed to attending the meetings. I reached out yeah. to, we had two new members join after the book sale. So we have about six members total. I've reached out to them via email. I have one coming in every week for two hours to help with projects inside the library. I have another awesome. project that they can take home and work on at their leisure, which is, it's a time consuming project of putting CDs in the cases and the labels on the CDs. But that's two hours that they're willing to volunteer their time to do and they can do it in the comfort of their home. So. Yeah, that volunteerism yeah. has been sorely needed. So yes. kudos to you for bringing that in. Thank you. Good job. You're welcome. Good job. So, other comments? Well, I wasn't here at last month's meeting. <clears throat> and if this is a, is, if this is a direction that people decide that it makes sense to go in, that seems fine. 
I will say that both United for Libraries and MBLCA, um, MBLA both recommend that a trustee attend friends meetings and a friend at attend trustee meetings. So that is the recommendation by those boards for libraries specifically and friend groups. So it's not, I think there were reasons why our subcommittee was created as we dove into examining the relationship between the friends and the, tr and the library and trustees, et cetera. What we discovered was what has traditionally been done is not necessarily recommended practices. I'm not saying that you can't do it that way, but what has been, we've shifted to is what is recommended by those governing boards. So I, you know, if this is what Cindy well, wants to do, that's fine. Okay, my only comment there is that there's a difference between attending a meeting and swerving a meeting. And I think that the feeling Cindy has is that, that she would like to be on her own with the with the, um, friends. And there's certainly trustees can, I attended friends meetings in the past, but all I did was, was sit there. And if they had a question that directly reflected on the board of trustees, I would try to get an answer, give an answer or get an answer. Um, I think that we've blurred the line as to the role of the board of trustees and the role of the friends. And that I think there's too much trustee influence. The friends are a separate entity, which is its own, uh, its own thing. And I think we need to let it flourish or fail on its own for a while um, with less, uh, just it seems too direct input from the board of trustees. I just think it's their thing and I certainly would, would encourage people to attend the meetings and I would encourage them, but there's only four of them to attend trustees meetings. And um, I don't think there's a prohibition, but I just think that we've crossed the line um, between um, offering guidance and friendly advice and, and being uh, too influential on a group that really is not the board of trustees. So I will <laughs> chime in here. So I am, yeah, I'm a little confused about what, so the whole purpose I thought of the subcommittee wasn't necessarily to monitor the interactions with Cindy and the friends, right? So that was kind of the, the first point that that sounds like what it's brought up. I thought we were supposed to kind of, yeah, help create a, a relationship and then yeah, be a resource for the friends. And so apparently the feedback is it's sounding that we are stepping over and not being a resource. Is that, is that what is happening? Um, yeah. Okay. So instead of just, why, why was that just not addressed beforehand? Like, why do we need to have a stop or why, why, why don't you just tell us that that was an issue? Or, I mean, the other part of it is, why didn't the friends come to us? Because this does feel like there's people who were not involved with this because there was a conflict of interest because Waitley's a small town and people in the same families are connected to both groups. And now those, what I'm seeing by head shakes and bringing this up on discussion, it's being discussed by those people. So I, I guess... it feels like it's been handled not uh, very well from my perspective. Well, to my recollection, <clears throat> the friends were in trouble. They were losing membership. There was two active members and they needed some help. So it was Bob's decision to ask trustees to attend. Maybe we could help them get back on their feet. I think they're back on their feet right now, according to Cindy, and it's time for let them continue on. It's not to say that we can't attend a meeting. We would just be there as an, in an advisory capacity, answer questions, but not really participate in the, in the, in the meeting. And that's the way it's, it's been since so long as I've been around in the library. They're self-supporting and just let them do it. 
I mean, I will argue against that and that I, you know, it was Cynthia who noticed that they're not, they don't have a web page. Um, but, you know, if the input is not needed, then. Yeah. And frankly, to your point, Jim, we were asked for our opinions and we were asked to, to be part of discussions. So I find this idea that you're telling me that, that, and Bob saying earlier, we're supposed to sit there and say nothing. We are being asked. Or the fact that we have somehow crossed the line. Yeah. So I, I just have a I'm problem. shocked by. I feel like there's crossing of lines going on beyond the friends. For sure. You know, I, I've just raised how many hundreds of dollars for the friends? It's, Yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. I, I don't even know why I bothered, frankly. I'm pretty, pretty upset right now. So. What's your pleasure? What would you like to do? I don't know. Where does it go from here? I guess it continues the way it is. I'm not comfortable with people who are should have recused themselves because of a conflict who are who are bringing this up and creating this thing and not having it go through the proper channels which if it was an issue the friends are the ones who should have brought it either to Cindy or to us so i i don't know how this you know i'm bringing it up because Cindy called me and asked me to bring it up because she felt like and she used the term that she was being babysat. And therefore, I bring it to your attention. I don't know what other way I can tell you that the librarian wanted some time with them to try to develop the relationship the way it used to be, which was a good relationship before the incidents occurred two or three years ago. That's why I brought it up. It has nothing to do with other conversations. It has everything to do with the fact that Cindy called me and we discussed this and I promised her that I would put it on the agenda. Am I correct, Cindy, in saying that? Yes, but since Cindy has made everybody upset, I will take back what I said. That, that's not productive. Yeah, and that's not, I didn't, that's not I, the point it, of this. It that's wasn't the point my, of this discussion. It wasn't my intention to get people upset. I just, I appreciate everything that has been done. But if the subcommittee is feeling like their work isn't done yet, then maybe it's a discussion that the three of us should be having. Sure, I, I'm, fi I'm fine with that. And you'll let me know what, what comes of it, Cindy? Yes. And you Okay. Well, I mean, sure, but there is this other point of people that feel like we have crossed a line and we are no longer just being a resource to the friends, right? And that is something that should also be addressed. Correct? Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so whoever can provide us feedback on that, it would be appreciated. Cindy, will you deliver that message? I will email the friends and just say, I'm looking for feedback. Please share it with, so I can I'm share not, it. I'm not saying it necessarily has to be on you, Cindy. I'm, I'm saying if other people on the board can provide feedback. <laughs> mm. See, I didn't know that the friends were having that concern about the trustees subcommittee members attending friends meetings until I heard it, you know, brought up during the trustees meeting. So th that I did, I was unaware that some of the friends or all of the friends just weren't appreciative of it. Right. So that's why I don't think it's on you, Cindy, to provide that feedback or have to go and get that feedback. I don't mind doing it. It's just, I can email them and just say, hey, 
you know, just looking for, you know, it's been a year, almost a year now, just what are your thoughts on the trustees attending friends meetings, the good and the bad? Do it just like as a survey. Yeah, or us as a subcommittee could reach out as well if we needed. Okay. So the subcommittee can reach out and um, create and a discussion and about it. Let us know. Any other comments? Is there any other new business? I have one thing. Oh, go ahead, Bob. You have your hand up first. That's okay. I don't know if this falls under new business. Um, Cindy, I have not had a chance to swing by the library. Things have been kind of busy on my end. Um, but I, I have a used Keurig coffee machine and a lot of coffee, the K-cups that go with it, decaf, regular um hot chocolate, any interest, Cindy, at the library for something like that? Would that be? If you want to bring it on by, sure. Okay, let me let me clean it. I'm going to be out of town until the 19th. Let me clean it and I will somewhere, I'll figure out. It'll. It's probably going to be around Thanksgiving. That's uh, okay. But if if you think I'd be, I just don't want to throw this thing away. It's in it's in perfect working order. Um, so, okay, I will, right. I will connect with you on that and we can keep that out of the okay. agenda here. So there, I'm not expecting a discussion or decision tonight. I just want to let the board know this so that a discussion can be made and a decision made before the budget is due, but Rebecca is asking for additional hours Nothing can really happen until FY23 when I were to submit the budget for FY23. Um, I've already have spoken with Brian who said that it's up to the board to decide whether or not we would offer her additional hours and if so, how many, and then it would get factored into the FY23 budget. So... Well, she had an opportunity for additional hours, did she not? When? The evenings were open until eight. Which she could not do because of her school schedule. So yes, and she did have the op opportunity for additional yeah. hours. Do you, I, oh, go ahead, Sheila. I, I mean, I know there's always something to do but does our library i mean are you keeping up with what you have to do now given the decreased statistics and if that's the case do you feel that we haven't needed any more hours than what the two staff are given for quite a few years and that included when we join CW Mars. Right. I mean, yeah. there are times when we, when it is slow and we're able to get the cataloging done and the bookshelf and all the other tasks that need to, that get, you know, should be getting done between waiting on patrons. I just, she asked, I said I would bring it up to the board. Okay. And so that's what I've done. The last time we were asked um, by a previous director, I might add, for additional I hours, remember. yeah, we went to the personnel board and what they said was, you know, bring us some show of increased statistics, bring us something that shows we're doing more than or something different than other libraries that would warrant that. Um, so that's that's what you'd be looking at in order to get that position increased. Right. And the, the numbers just aren't there right now. No. Right. Yeah, you're you would have to, if you're gonna ask 
for more hours, um, you know that the finance committee is going to go. Um, they're going to want to see statistics. They're going to want to see a, re a real reason, reason. why there be more hours. Yep. Jill is absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you, Cindy, what do you want us to do? Maybe we table it and bring it up under new business as it gets closer to the budget being due. That, the budget is is usually due what we use. You, you have to get that in January. I believe January because the joint meeting is usually February. All right. So then we probably should discuss it in December. Okay. And not wait until yeah. January. Um, did she indicate how many hours she would like how many more hours yeah. she was looking for? She did not, but I can ask her, say, if we were to offer you more, how many more would you be looking for? I mean, at 20 hours, we would then also have to offer benefits. How many hours does she have now? 15. And Cindy, yeah. you're doing 23? 22. 22. All right. So some weeks, because since COVID started, it feels like 40. Um. <laughs> yeah let there is a process for that it isn't just you know the board says yeah she can have another four or five hours that's it's a you know it's a process for the town yeah. first through the personnel board and then as bob said through the finance committee yeah so so cindy for this december if 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 we're going to pursue this you, you you've really got to show us the need so that we can, mm -hmm. we can sell it as okay. a need. Are you two keeping up with, with what's coming and going through the library at this point? Yes. Okay. Do you feel that, mm, could you make good use if we even of a, another hour or two? Yes, there's definitely things that could be done within that hour, extra hour or two, if it was a possibility. Okay. Just. But I also understand. I also understand where the board the board is regarding this, and the fact that the last two years we've been at all departments have been asked to level fund. Mm -hmm. So going in and saying, hey, I have a staff person who would like to now have 17 hours a week, despite the fact that our circulation is now this much less than it was, would probably be a hard sell. Yeah, I would say I looked when we were first talking about it, we are still less than at least 2019 number wise with circulation. Yeah. Does, is it? Is it wrong to th to think that that you 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 should be the one to have thought of this as opposed to her asking for more hours? I just no. the need the need the need should come first, and then say, "Hey, could you do more hours?" I don't know. No, what you're saying makes sense. That it should have been my being so appreciative of her being an excellent employee and like an incentive to want her to stay on longer, which I do to say, Hey, you know, I was able to negotiate this for it to happen, but it was just one day in a conversation. She's like, Oh, how, so I'd love to be able to get more hours. How is, how is, how would that be possible? And I said, I would bring it, I would, bring it up to the board and find out what the process was. So I'll let her know that, we have to show the need to present to the personnel and the finance committee that, you know, without those additional hours, work's not getting done. And I can't, as of right now, I can't justify that. Okay. But that would be the case that you'd need to make. Right. Okay. You should tell okay. her it's good for asking though. Right. right. It's a... Uh... <laughs> You know, some I mean, don't know if you don't ask. Right. Um, so now I don't can ask let her things, know. So. Right. Okay. So I will let her know that I've asked and that these are the steps that I now have to take to try to make it happen. Okay. Is there any other new business? Okay. A motion to adjourn? I move. 
Is there a second? A second. Is there any opposition? Then the meeting is closed. I'm going to stop recording now.